Hello, Douglas County. I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. Thank you so much for joining me for this COVID-19 weekly update as it pertains to Douglas County. Joining me today in another update, which I am really happy to have, the Honorable Dr. Janet Meemark of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. How are you doing, Dr. Meemark? Oh, I'm hanging in there. Thank you. I, my uh, my greetings are, are coming out so nice now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, you know, we're getting we're going into the holiday season. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, you know, it's so important that we really, in light of everything that's going on, I really want to try to just keep people inspired and uplifted. You know, even with news that COVID numbers seem to be rising. Speaking of that, what are the current numbers in Douglas County now? Yeah, so we've um, passed the 5,000 um, threshold for cases in Douglas County, and we're at 308 cases per 100,000. So remember, you know, 100 cases over 100,000 is um, is high, and so we're at 308, and, and that's not including the rapid antigens, which we're seeing a, a pretty steep rise in, and so those are included in that bucket. So it's, it is well over 300 cases so um, per 100,000, and I, I kind of liken it to the, the feel-like metric. You know how sometimes the weather will say, well, it feels like, well, when you're way over 300 like that, um, you're going to see more cases in the community, and so you're going to probably be personally feeling it a little bit more. Either you'll know more friends that are quarantining or, you know, quarantining out of school or people that are becoming positive. Um, that's definitely what I've been seeing in my community. More, and pe more people I know are either becoming positive or quarantining at this point. Wow. What is the status of Wall Star Douglas? Um, well, Star Douglas is very busy, and so it's with COVID and non-COVID patients, but they continue to be very busy with their uh, critical care beds as well as their medical surgical beds. So total confirmed cases now, we're over 5,000, yeah. 518 total hospitalizations, and 85 total deaths. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what we're looking at right now. How is the testing going in Douglas County? So testing is going pretty well, and so and I do want to thank the Board of Commissioners from Douglas County. Um, they've given us some additional funding to expand testing, and so it's very important. We Our only static site that we had was the Douglas County um, Health Department, and so now we can bring the core team back out there and to do more testing because now because of the surge, the demand and testing has been very high, and those percentage numbers for the tests that are coming back positive just keep rising, and so we really need to be able to test and find out who has it so that we don't infect each other. Sounds good. And I also want to remind our viewers that we have a COVID-19 uh, hub of information directly on our website, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. You can get the latest information and details. And also remind everyone, on Saturday, December 19th, December 19th, we're going to have free COVID testing in the parking lot of the Douglas County Courthouse. Great. <clears throat> Can I also, um, Rick, add on that um, uh, the um, testing times will be moving for our health department because of the, the bitter cold. So um, it, they'll be moving from 9 to 12, Monday through Saturday. So I just want to make sure everybody knew that for that location. Otherwise, go to our website to see where the core team um, will be going. And they'll be coming out soon. They're not quite there yet, but they're coming. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Is there anything new about the COVID-19 vaccine that you can tell us? Yeah, there's a, so there's been a lot of media. This is kind of our, our bright um, ray of hope here, right? Um, so there's two vaccines that are on their way, and they're going through emergency use authorization right now with the FDA. So you've heard about the Pfizer vaccine, which is the ultra-cold vaccine. It doesn't affect um, anybody who uh, is not handling the vaccine, but it um, it's a vaccine that will have two doses. They're going to be 21 days apart for that vaccine. The second vaccine is the Moderna vaccine and that one is just regularly stored in, in cold storage and that's two doses as well 28 days apart now the vaccines I want everybody to remember that these are the first vaccines and it's really unbelievable that within one year they have been able to develop effective vaccines they are over 95 percent um, effect no about 95 percent sorry effective so of keeping the person that received the vaccine from getting COVID-19 but because it's a brand new vaccine there's really it's not going 
going to be coming in large numbers yet. So um, we are waiting. The Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices already put out their recommendation for healthcare personnel and for nursing home residents to receive the vaccine first as priority. Now, that's just a recommendation that the CDC adopts, but um, our governor will decide based on our situation in our state who should be the priority to receive the vaccine. Remember, that's only small uh, amounts that will be coming out first. So this is not the, the mass vaccination yet for the population. People have been asking me that. We anticipate that vaccine will be uh, more in the springtime that we can cover everybody. So first, we'll start with a small group and then work our way out as more and more vaccine comes out. I wanted to make sure that everybody knew too, there are some side effects with the vaccine, but they're very minor. But you, you have to know if you receive it, that within three days, you could have some of the vaccine um, um, effects, like having soreness in the arm for sure. You could have some um, fevers, and you could have fatigue. And that sounds very much like another virus that we have, COVID. So just remember, it's a vaccine reaction that you can get um, once you get that vaccine. But it is otherwise very, very um, well tolerated and it's doing very well so far. Uh, good to hear. I know that recently the CDC released some new COVID-19 updates. Speaking of the CDC, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so that just came out yesterday. So they were, um, based on some observations that they've seen, that they're going to um, shorten the quarantine period. So you all know the 14 days that we've been looking at. Um, they want to shorten that to a 10-day quarantine. Um, you can do it, and if you develop no symptoms after exposure, then you can um, uh, uh, release your, your quarantine. Um, and then the other option is seven days and then get a test on the seventh day. And so a PCR test is the one that we recommend, which is the one that you get at the drive throughs um, The only thing I got to uh, mention is that this is a, a recommendation from the CDC, but it has to be adopted by local jurisdictions. So our state is actually reviewing it because, you know, they may add things that are particular for our state. And so right now we still have the 14-day quarantine. All right, so you cannot switch to the 10-day quarantine yet until um, it goes through our state. And, and, um, and we anticipate that it will, but we don't have final word yet. That's a good distinction to make and appreciate that. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the residents of Douglas County today? So um, a couple things. So, um, you know, we were talking about testing and, um, and quarantine. I, I want everybody to remember that, you know, when you are placed on quarantine, what qu quarantine means is anywhere between 2 and 14 days, you had a contact with somebody that had COVID-19. So between those days, you can develop COVID-19 at any time. You cannot get a test um, at day 2, 3, even day 10, um, to get yourself out of quarantine. So you can't get out of quarantine until, unless you uh, meet the recommendation. So we get a lot of confusion with that, so I want to make sure everybody understood that. Um, the other thing is a positive test is a positive test. You cannot get another test that will be negative to uh, you know, negate your positive. You have to complete the isolation for the positive test, all right, because every specimen is different. And so us catching a positive test is a good thing. That means that we got enough specimen and you were detected to have COVID-19. Your next specimen, you know, may not have enough to be able to catch it on the second one. So uh, I wanted people to understand that. And we talked about the vaccine, and it definitely is a ray of hope that we have, but it is not a silver bullet. It is not here yet. It is not going to be rolling out, and our mass population is going to get vaccinated like that. This is going to, we already mentioned it, and we don't anticipate mass vaccina vaccination of the population until the springtime. And that would still take a little while to vaccinate everybody. We only have a few things that work, right? And we have to please keep pushing, keep pushing through this. I know we're tired. I don't see people wearing masks as much and, and we're hearing about too many parties and gatherings where COVID is spreading. So please wear those masks. Um, try not to get together with people that are outside your immediate family in small gatherings because that's where we're seeing it spread. The cases are very high right now. Make sure you maintain your distance and, and try your best to not do too many unnecessary things that are going to put you at risk during this time. We have hope it's coming, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So we've made it this far. Let's just try to push just a little bit more to get there. 
Dr. Meemar sounds like wonderful advice on this Thursday, December 3rd, 2020. We want to let everyone know what day it is with this information that you're providing. Thank you so much for being of such great help and support for the Douglas County community. Thank you. Thank you.